Well, the next video is, or the next talk is about weblog tie-offs, mainly at festivals. Like, um, I mean, what you do for your own rigs is really your problem. Like, if your tie-offs are not releasable, that's, in the end, um, it takes a lot of time for you. But um, at the festival, when you have to de-rig 20 lines, um, or re-rig or retention, you really want tie-offs that work, that prevent slippage, um, and that they're practical. Um, so why are web, web, uh, web-top tie-offs important? Um, I guess most of you have seen the video um, of the tail walk. I'll just show it in my presentation. Just while I'm talking, you can see it's slowly slipping and the tail is creeping out. That's basically what happens when you walk and bounce and leash fall on a line. And um, after a few cycles, sometimes more, sometimes less, depending on webbing and weblock combination, um, it will slip out. And um, so what is important for your weblock tie-offs? So we're webbing tie-offs. Your tie-off should be going to the master point, not a single bolt, because if it does slip and it creates tension on your um, tie-off, then you're loading a single bolt. So it shouldn't compromise any part of the anchor. Um, and it is very handy to leave enough slack um, in your tie-off so you can retension the line. Um, so you don't have to untie any additional backups or take the webbing out of a bag to retension your line. Um, then it has to sit nicely under tension. Sure, um, it's it's never ideal to um, um, to bend the webbing over an edge of a of a weblock, even if it doesn't have sharp edges. But it has to sit nicely under tension. Um, the knot has to be releasable under tension, otherwise the line is really hard to derig. Um, the knot needs to be inspectable. Um, that's for me is a very important point for festivals that all the rigs um, have, if possible, the same tie-off. Um, and it has to be able to tie it tightly to prevent slipping. So if you tie it off and you have like a five centimeter or 10 centimeter loop, it will still slip and the tail can walk out. Um, so some manufacturers have recommendations for tie-offs of their web blocks. Some are better than others. Um, some are not releasable. Some manufacturers, um, like this one, um, I don't want to give, like, a lot of manufacturers have not the greatest um, tie offs, but that's what they recommend. And in the end, if something happens and you don't use the recommendations, then that's your problem. Um, that would be one tie off just wrapped around the, um, I can't hear the noise that's going on out there. Um, just wrapped around the the web lock and hope you can see it and then just tied off basically or slipped through it's non-releasable and also what we what problems we've seen with those tie offs is that they slip to the front and you end up with the webbing the tie off on the line um so these are not great um you might want to send a message to your manufacturer of your web lock and ask if they might be able to come up with a better solution. Um, that might be very helpful. Um, yes, so as I said before, um, it's nice to have a, um, the same uh, tie-off method for inspectability um, on, on all web blocks. And my preferred method is the following. Well, I can show you here. Um, it's basically, you go up through, I'll, I'll untie it and do it in a second. You go up through the web lock with the tail that comes out from the bottom and go over the, over the web lock through the bottom of the, of the shackle. Let's see, can't see it. 
I can't see myself as a problem right here. Okay. So, so it's going up through the web block over and you shouldn't have web blocks that are too sharp here. Um, so you go around the shackle twice, if possible, if you have enough space. And then you basically, you don't do an overhand, but you do an overhand with a bite. So you create a daisy chain. And even if that comes under tension, you can undo the daisy chain and pop through the bite in the end. Just pull it out and it's easily too, easy to undo. That's my preferred method. And I've seen that used all over the world at different festivals as well. It's very similar to the tie-off method um, for the AVL4 from Balance Community. They just go, um, and have it here, instead of the shackle, because it doesn't necessarily need a shackle for a connector. Um, it just goes over around those two holes in the web block. It's basically the same, same method. Um, so just, can I have someone to hold this? Yeah. And someone here. <laughs> it's good to have a lot of people in the living room. Um, Anchorage. Anchorage. Um, people anchors. So I go through the bottom. I pull out as much as I need to retention the line. I go from the top through the shackle. Put it a little bit this way. So it's in front of the camera. Make sure it sits nicely somewhere in the web block. Some web blocks are easier or nicer to tie off than others. <laughs> and I go through the shackle again. I don't have enough space. Santi has very thick fingers, so it's like, just go around once. <laughs> and then let's, let's return to the camera. Um, if I would pop through this tail, through this loop, just move a bit over here, um, then I would have an overhand, right? But not releasable. So if I take a bite of this, I go through here, and I cinch that tight around the shackle, I have a releasable knot, I pop that through again, create another daisy, and then whenever I have like 20 centimeters left, I'll pop that tail through. I can tie that off to my, or clip it off with the carabiner to my shackle as well. Don't have to really if the tail is long enough and the chain is tight. So that's my preferred tie-off method. It works for, thank you, for pretty much all web locks, even though you should still follow your manufacturer's recommendations. Um, you can go over your, um, you can go over your soft release and do the same thing, um, on the shackle. There are some sharp web blocks out there. Um, so you don't want to go over the edge on the top then you can still go underneath and you don't have so much webbing touching the actual web block. But I mean, just buy a good web block, so <laughs> without sharp edges, that would be preferred. Um, yeah, that's my two cents on um, webbing web block tie-offs. Um, just going back to my um, presentation. Can you show it again, the whole thing? I'll show it again in a second. Some, yeah, could hardly see it. Um, just wanna, back to the presentation. Um, so yeah, follow manufacturer's recommendations or ask them to maybe make better ones. Um, and um, you can really do those. Um, this or my preferred method um, on many different web blocks. Um, we had a talk on um, webbing on weblock slippage in weblocks and weblock tie-offs already in 2017 by Ollie during a safety event. Um, I can link that in the chat. And also for 
if you want to watch it again, um, we have two ISA videos what on tie-offs that we recommend. Um, one is the daisy chain method that I just showed. The other one is the barrel knot, which I found um, gets pretty tight and hard to open um, at, during festival use as well. And then I can link also the slippage warning in the chat in a bit. Um, I'll just do that. And then I can show tie up again for those who couldn't see it. I guess it was hard to see on my small screen because I was still sharing my slides. Um, so first, Ollie's talk. Mm. And yeah, I'll show the one that I did in a second. Um, the second one is the crazy chain tie off video. I think it's Philip doing that or Tom, I'm not sure. And barrel knot. Off. And the fourth, the anti slippage or the slippage warning from a couple of years back is there. So, again, can I have my anchors? <laughs> why one or two loops around the shackle? Um, why, Sarah's just asked, um, why one or two loops around the shackle? It's just creates an extra friction point like two if you two, can, can do two wraps do two wraps it just creates more friction before the actual knot so it's easier to untie um the knot in the end so now let's undo it fully okay good no. yes. so this is the tail like you tension your line whatever system you're using then once you're done tensioning you go with the webbing on the bottom of the web lock through the top pull out as much like as you need as you would to need to retention you go through the top of the while block at uh, the shackle, sorry. Once, then twice. <laughs> Once and twice. And what I didn't say before, I don't know if you saw, uh, I only did one wrap. So if you do two wraps, you only do the um, daisy overhand knot. Um, through the second layer. So that I maybe wasn't mentioned. So I have the second wrap, you can see here, and I'm going through with a bite of my bite of webbing through here, cinch that tight, that's possible. So there's no slack down here. And then I do a couple of daisies, cinch them tight, and then pop the end through just lock it off and that's it and that can easily if you pull even if it does get tight like with this like with my weight i've always been able to open even if it got really tight i just hang in there with my personal anchor and it would come undone if i had to usually you can just pull it by hand any questions Thomas asked, what about one and a half or double wrap? You mean in the web lock for slippage? It does still slip. Like, um, it does, it is slower, but um, it will always creep out. But it does, it depends, it really depends on the web lock and you have to, well, with the double wrap in the web lock, 
um, you also create forces on the web block that might um, be higher because it creates a pulley effect in the web block. That might not be good for your web block, so just follow your manufacturer's recommendations on that. It does stop slippage as well, but you can't pre tension with the double double wrap in your web block. What is what if there is no space in the shackle? Um, what if is there no space in the shackle? Someone asked. Um, take a second shackle. <laughs> take a second shackle. <laughs> um, you can also, yeah. I mean, there is usually space in the shackle. Use a bigger shackle. Um, but the problem, like, I see a lot of people have done that before with the um, tie off around the web lock because they didn't have or they thought they didn't have enough space um, in the shackle. There's usually enough to pop a bite of webbing through um, if you don't have super small shackles. Uh, but otherwise, you can add another shackle to your rig or still carabiner if it's not a festival um, um, to do the tie off on that. You just have to know that if it does get loaded or if your tie off does get loaded, your, the, the whole line is not on your web block anymore. It's on the point that you tied off to, like your carabiner or shackle, whatever. I have a quick question, actually. Um, I was wondering, with the recommended tie-off that the ISA posted with wrapping around twice and then tying back to the other tail part, I was wondering, has that had any movement in it? Um, it's something I've done, and I haven't noticed any starting of slippage. But I was wondering, can that kind of get eaten in still because you're tying it to the piece of rope, not something solid, if you know what I mean? No? Am I muted? No, 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 we heard you. Um, Tom didn't. I asked him, but he didn't probably hear your question. Um, I haven't used it much, so I can't tell and I haven't seen any issues with that. Moving or slipping, but I've seen them get pretty tight so that's why i'm not using them so it can actually get like yeah it can get tight yeah. and i was worried about it kind of getting pulled through because you're tying it to the end rather than something solid um but yeah my thoughts were if you got an advanced slippage and it got really tight um could it load the the webbing weirdly being tied off to the webbing but i thought I it was unlikely I guess your issue would be if you had slack in here at the beginning and wouldn't make it tight to start. Yeah. 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 Cool. No worries. I just thought I'd check because I wondered about that. Um, yeah. But yeah, thanks for the presentation, Mida. You're welcome. <laughs>